Hello everyone, I'm Zach Peterson and welcome back to another Flux tutorial. Today I'm going to show you what you need to do to prepare your board for manufacturing. Now once you've finished your PCB layout and you want to send it off to a manufacturer to get fabricated and to get assembled, you will need to create some specific files from your PCB layout. The files that you need to create can be downloaded from the Flux platform. There are options inside the platform that allow you to download these files. I'm going to show you where to access these features. I'm going to explain what the files are and we'll show you just a quick example of what is contained in the downloads. Right now I'm inside the Flux platform and I've opened up a project from the publicly available library. And this particular project is actually a sub layout. However, you can create manufacturing files for an individual sub layout or for a regular project, even a project that is composed just of sub layouts. So once you're inside uh, the project, to export the manufacturing files that you'll need to produce the board, all you need to do is go to the main menu, go over to export, and then from here you will see the three main sets of files that you need. So the first is your Gerbers in RS-274X2 format. The next is your Bill of Materials. And then the last one is your Pick and Place. The Gerbers are the main files that you need to accurately represent this uh, PCB layout, and in particular, all of the copper features and drill holes that will then be used to create tooling to manufacture the bare board. So the Gerbers are for the bare board production. The other two uh, documents here, the bill of materials and then the pick and place file, those are for assembly. So your bill of materials contains a big list of all the parts and then the pick and place file tells the, uh, the assembler where all those parts go. So just to see what the Gerber files actually look like, what I'm gonna do right now is just download the Gerbers for this project. And I'm gonna use a program called GerbV. Now, GERB-V is an open source program. You can use it to look at Gerber files. So Gerber files uh, usually have an extension .gbr, especially when they're in the RS-274x2 uh, format. Open these up and we can see what they look like. So sometimes you get a, a, a bunch of errors here. Um, that's because it's expecting a different extension. Sometimes uh, Gerber files are named with the .art extension, but here you can see that we have all of these Gerber files opened. Now from here, what you can do is actually look at the same data that the manufacturer is going to look at when they plan your board for manufacturing. So here you can see what's exactly what's going into the silk screen. You can see exactly what's going into the copper layers. Just as an example here, you know, I can turn off everything except for, let's say, the bottom silk or let's say here, bottom copper, um, so on and so forth. So this is a good way to just check that the files that you're going to send off to your fabrication house contain all of the data that you expect them to contain. So it's really easy to do. You just want to scan through this, make sure that you recognize everything in the design, and you want to make sure that all of the layers that you need are present. Now, after you've checked the uh, Gerber files, the next thing you'll want to do is go back to the main menu, go over to the export menu, and then download the bill of materials and the pick and place file. Now, the bill of materials is actually important to check, and so we'll see why in just a moment. The pick and place is not something that normally gets reviewed. Your manufacturer will be reviewing it when you send everything off to them to produce the board or assemble the board because they're going to use it for programming and they're going to make sure that it contains data that makes sense. Once we open up the bill of materials, we do want to check for some important things inside this document. So first, we notice that each of these lines has a quantity and reference designators attached to it. So that's important. Then what we want to do is make sure that everything has a manufacturer part number and ideally a, a distributor name and distributor information, but that's uh, not required. That's something you can usually fill in yourself later. So you'll notice here in column E, 
that we do have part numbers for the STM32 microcontroller, and then we have a part number for uh, this particular uh, ceramic resonator. But we don't have part numbers for any of these passives or this LED. So that's really important. What it tells you is that these components were placed as generics, or when the components were created, uh, there just wasn't any parts data attached to them. So what you would want to do is actually go back into your project, and when you go back into the project, you would then want to actually look for each of these components and assign a manufacturer part number and a manufacturer name to them, so that way you can actually order those parts and get the board assembled. Next, what we want to look at is the pick and place file. Now, this isn't something that you usually uh, review on your own, um, but you at least want to check to see that each of these components has a layer assignment, a rotation, and then a uh, X and Y coordinate attached to them. The reason for that is, of course, these values are going to be programmed into a pick and place machine, which will automatically place components during assembly. If you look in this menu, under the export menu, um, one thing that you won't see is an NC drill file. So if you're familiar with PCB fabrication already, then you know that there is another file that is needed, and it's called the NC drill file. This is used to program a CNC drilling machine that will then be used to place holes for vias and through hole components. Now, the thing I'd like to note is that when you download the Gerbers, if you just look in the Gerber folder, you'll actually see the drill file right here. This file contains the NC drill binary data. So this file is your NC drill file. Just make sure to send this along with the Gerbers and then your fabricator will have everything that they need to fabricate the board. So sometimes this is actually packaged as a separate file. You don't generally include it with the Gerbers. In Flux, we do include it with the Gerbers, so that way you have a complete package. So the last thing I'd like to note is that uh, you should always perform a very thorough review of your design before you send it off to manufacturing. Make sure that you've included all the components, make sure that there's always sourcing data present, make sure that you have part numbers attached to all the components, and make sure that you've implemented the functionality that you actually want that there's no connection errors or routing errors or anything like this. Sometimes a fabricator will do very little review on a board. They'll just produce it as they receive the files unless you ask for a much deeper review of the design. Thank you so much for following along with this tutorial. We'll see you for the next one. And to learn more about performing a design review in Flux, we have another video on that topic. And of course, there's more information in the Flux documentation. Thank you.